He knew I was talented. It's just, you know, uh, just got to find a way to play within the system and, you know, uh, become more than just a talented one-on-one -on -one player. Marshawn Shatif Brooks, born January 26, 1989. Today's feature is a guy many had high expectations for leaving college as the nation's second leading scorer ahead of guys like Kemba Walker and CJ McCollum. He played four years in college and would improve each season, especially in points per game, becoming one of the nation's premier amateur offensive talents. The Boston Celtics took him 25th in the first round of the draft in 2011, then immediately traded him to the New Jersey Nets where he had a pretty good rookie season. He was selected to the All-Star Weekend's Rising Star Challenge, made an all-rookie team and averaged 12.6 points per game over 52 games while starting just about all of them. With New Jersey entering complete rebuild mode with no superstars on their team and only star Darren Williams in his last year playing up to that level, the Nets saw Marshawn as a very important piece to their future. Leaving college, he was just what you would think would do well in the open space NBA with his production. The thing about college basketball though is the player first gets to choose the exact program he'd like to play in. This means going to a place that'll do their best to make sure he performs to the best of his ability by placing him in situations that give him great opportunities to look his best in the eyes of the next level. Barring the player is good enough to receive such a catering and has the confidence and skills that translate to the next level after high school. The other side of that is you're a player that isn't ready for a level like the NCAA Division I and have to take whatever offers you get, meaning sitting the bench for a while until you find your way or not and fall out of the race. Marshawn wasn't ready his first two seasons until his junior year where he became a starter and began to show his skill in the Providence offense. As he got more and more freedom, he got comfortable and showed his entire offensive package his senior year and it was fun to see. Almost had the characteristics of superstar-ish talent. A high volume, confident scorer, long wing that can rebound and play defense will always have a place in the NBA, at least a shot at it. And looking back at Marshawn's NBA career, that's exactly what he ended up getting, a shot. Nothing more, nothing less. His career sporadically lasted five total seasons, then he was out the league to become a journeyman all over the world and never quite capitalized on his potential or opportunity. Not in the NBA at least. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Marshawn Brooks was a 6'5 shooting guard from Long Branch, New Jersey, where he lived for some time before moving to Georgia. He wasn't much to talk about in high school, being ranked outside the top 200 players in his class. The fact he even made it as far as he did is a testament to his dedication and perseverance. He was able to garner scholarships from mostly mid-major schools and settled on the Providence Friars where he would enroll in 2007. As a freshman, as well as sophomore, Brooks wasn't even a part of the rotation. As a junior, he began to see more time on the floor, shooting 46.7% from the field. He had his career high up to that point with a 24-point game on 8 of 10 shooting against Vermont on November 24, 2009. He recorded 25 points and 5 rebounds on January 23, 2010 against South Florida and ended the season averaging 14.2 points a game. As a senior is where most came to know and really follow Brooks. He upped his field goal attempts from 11 to nearly 18 shots a game and it paid off, averaging almost 25 points, good for second in the nation. But the team was horrible, going 15 and 17 and missing the tournament by a mile. Marshawn entered the draft and was a hot name prior to, mainly because if you needed a bucket, he was your guy. Stunt number one, bad timing.
A huge reason Marshawn Brooks' game didn't translate to the NBA was because he may have benefited more by being in a different era. One that suited his ball-dominant game. With the direction the game was going behind guys like Steph Curry and the Warriors move the ball offense and everyone else in those times looking to mimic that, a guy that's all about ISO like a Marshawn Brooks would most likely struggle. Same happened to Melo, AI, and all other players who had that one-on-one -on -one style game where that was really all they could do and it alienated the rest of the team. Even a guy like Kyrie Irving now that seems to benefit in free offenses is finding it hard to win with that style. Brooks was even worse because his game was just so slow to develop. He would score but it was almost painful to watch him at 6'5", take so long to get his move or shot off. His style just wasn't entertaining for some unless he was on fire. You could get away with that in college when you're the only pro talent on your team and coaching staff, but when there's other players getting paid, along with a staff of paid professionals, the ball has to move. And that's where the game went with guys like Derrick Rose, John Wall, and especially Steph Curry, who completely changed the game to a more high pace, share the ball, shoot as much as you can get up offense. Brooks would have been nice in 97 to about 2009, but after that, it all changed and left Marshawn in its wake. Maybe if he learned to play off the ball more like Joe Johnson in Phoenix, but having the ball in his hands is all he wanted to do, and that made him a less valuable player in the age he was in. Stunt number two, trading for Joe Johnson. As if timing couldn't get worse, in his second season in the league, coming off a nice rookie year, but a bit inflated because of the poor roster and by default more opportunities, Marshawn took a huge step back in year two after the team brought in Joe Johnson. In a blockbuster off-season trade, the Nets acquired Joe Johnson, giving up five total players, six if you include the first round draft pick also thrown in the deal that turned out to be Shane Larkin. Joe came in after being an all-star every season in Atlanta and immediately assumed lead offensive role and most importantly lead shooting guard, giving him the ball to decide the offense every time down the floor. Joe was declining fast though, just about every season after coming to Brooklyn, his play deteriorated, but not more than Marshawn Brooks. In his second year, his points per game dropped from 13 a game to 5 a game in significantly less minutes, partially due to a sprained ankle suffered early on, but mostly because his opportunity to grow and figure things out on his own was taken away when Joe Johnson came to town and was expected to form a big two with Darren Williams. That left Marshawn out in the cold. Stunt number three, confidence is priceless. You know, I feel like once my minutes started getting pulled from under me, just like every player in the NBA, I started losing a little confidence. To see an NBA player admit lacking the confidence to be more than just a bench guy and journeyman is at the very least a good teaching tool and also a shock. But that's exactly what Marshawn would end up doing. Upon Avery Johnson's firing, assistant PJ Carlissimo took over as interim head coach and gave Brooks a lot more playing time, especially with the injury to Joe Johnson, which admittedly gave Brooks a ton more confidence in his game. But with the return of Joe, Brooks' time significantly decreased from 30 minutes a game to 12 minutes per game. The ups and downs put Marshawn in a mental space he would not recover for the rest of the season. In my opinion, him not being ranked in high school and also not playing for a major program that made it to high levels of basketball didn't allow Marshawn to develop the confidence he needed to become successful so young in his career. Lacking confidence is the worst thing a basketball player can do. Everything goes wrong after that. Brooks finished the season averaging just 5 points a game and 1 assist. And he admitted with so much time on the bench, he lost his confidence. The next year, he was traded to the Celtics, Warriors and Lakers all during the 13-14 season and never regained his potential. 
He went overseas, then back to the league in 2017-18 from Memphis, but was traded and waived by the Bulls the next season. He's been in China ever since. All in all, Marshawn Brooks was a good player when things all fit his style, but his skill set in today's game just didn't help him succeed and stay long term. But that's a lot more than anyone expected as an amateur. Salute to Marshawn, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC stunted growth, and I'm out. I mean, it's the NBA, man. I mean, frustrating isn't the word. I mean, all you can do is just work hard and, you know, just control what you can control.